Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel! This is Rina bringing you another tutorial once again sponsored by Clip Studio Paint, which is a program that I'll be using in today's video. You guys should totally check it out. While it's not necessary for what I'll explain here today, I can't stop recommending it. It's a great software for digital artists. You'll find all the links to Clip Studio Paint's page in the description box. So, by popular demand, today I'll try to give you some tips and pointers about how to draw clothes, specifically clothing folds, and hopefully you'll be able to draw them more easily after this. But before that, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have notifications enabled by clicking on the bell, that way you won't miss out on any future videos. You can also support my Patreon to have early access to all my art and tutorials before I post them publicly. You'll find a link to it on the top right corner and the description box as well. And now, let's start! First things first, I need you to understand that there is not one miraculous trick to draw clothing folds. Why? because there's a bunch of different fabrics, and this means each one of them works in a different way. Leather doesn't react the same way as cotton or lycra. Every fabric has a different weight and elasticity, which affects the way they sit and stretch on top of a surface. So, the first step you need to take to get better at drawing clothes is to search for references, pictures of real clothes and fabrics, and study how they react once placed onto the human body. You can complement those studies with 2D references too, as in illustrations from other artists and drawing guides you can find on internet or books, but in my opinion you'll learn the most if you study from real life. That said, it is true that a lot of fabrics fold in similar ways and at similar spots. Let's talk about that in more depth. Clothing folds are a lot about tension points, to put it somehow. If I hold a piece of fabric like this, most of the creases will gather at the top, where my hand is holding it. If I hold it apart with my two hands though, now we've added the second tension point, so the wrinkles will go from one side to the other, but also downwards because of gravity things. So we have the first two types of folds already explained. Straight lines and long soft curves. What are some others? Zigzag lines. This one is useful to represent fabric that is very compressed and or overlapped. I use it a lot around the knees when drawing fabrics like denim. We also have the wardrobe long petal shape, whatever you want to call it, honestly. <laughs> it's just some sort of long stroke with a roundy edge. It works great on the elbows and it's also good for representing baggy clothes. With this, you can pretty much draw anything already. Don't trust me? <laughs> Let's take a look at some pictures. While sometimes you will only use one of these types of folds, most clothes are usually a combination of them. There might also be cases where more than one of these techniques fit what you want to represent. That's why I can't give you an exact rule to draw clothing folds, because it depends a lot on every artist's technique and the aesthetics they are looking for. Fabrics that are very heavy or thick, such as leather and denim, uh, tend to have less and larger wrinkles, because their properties uh, don't allow for as much bending. On the contrary, lighter and thinner fabrics, such as silk, chiffon, cotton, tend to have more folds and kinda flow more and adjust to the body shape.
Now, where to place all those lines? Again, there's no perfect way to respond to that question, but I can provide you a few ideas of the most recurrent places. Like I said at the beginning, wrinkles tend to gather around these so-called tension points. This means that places like armpits, elbows, wrists, crutch, knees, and ankles are the most common places, but also the shoulders, breasts, hips, tummy, and overall anything that protrudes. Why are these the most common places? Armpits and crotch trap the fabric, so these places act as a tension point. Knees and tummies protrude, and clothes usually have seams at those places. Seams create a new tension point, keep that in mind as well. Let's put all of that into action. I'm gonna sketch some clothes on top of this, which I hope will help you understand everything better. Let's go for a loose t-shirt. This will be some sort of heavy material, so I'll do some straight lines that will go downwards from the chest area to represent the weight of the fabric. A sideways view of this sort of article would look like this. But look at what happens if I change the straight lines to some soft curves and zigzags around the middle section. The shirt now has become a softer material that adjusts more easily to the body, hence why it stays closer to the original silhouette and overlaps more around the waist. Let's try with a hoodie now. The fabric used on this type of clothes is pretty thick usually, and as I said earlier, the thicker the fabric is, the fewer wrinkles there should be because the material doesn't deform that easily. So for this, it's best to keep the wrinkles minimal and use long strokes for them. Pay attention to the wrinkles that appear here on the sleeve. Those happen when the arms are pressed against the body. The fabric gets trapped in there, and so it creates new tension points once again. We can also get rid of the body silhouette completely if we want, and make wrinkles go downwards from the chest again. This way the hoodie doesn't seem to be as oversized for her as it was previously. Also observe this line. Elbows are a tension point, and although you can see it in the drawing, there is a seam going around the top of the sleeve. And what did seams create? Bingo! Tension points too. So the fabric is being stretched between these two spots, and that's why I added that line. The water drop folds around the cuffs and the bottom are meant to represent the clothing overlapping a bit to create a puffy feeling. Moving on to the next example. How about a simple summery outfit? A tank top and some shirts? We can see the silhouette very well with this. The wrinkles of the top are still somewhat large and curve softly from one place to the other, so we get the feeling of a fitting article but which is not too tight on her. Look at what happens if we change the folds into shorter and straighter lines. Now this looks a lot tighter than before. Why is that? Each breast is a protrusion, right? No matter if they are big or small, the fabric is being pulled to put it somehow, between these two spots. Hence why small wrinkles appear in the center, because the fabric is stretching and maybe even reaching its maximum elasticity. The wrinkles around the waist work pretty much the same way. No matter if the person is fat or thin, tummies bulge out naturally and create some sort of curve on the abdomen, even if it's just a small one. So, assuming that there are seams on the sides of this tank top, the wrinkles will move from there and around the belly. 
I want to keep the shorts somewhat tight too, so short lines are a must for this. Although not too much, the fabric gets trapped around the groin. We can use either curves or the water drop technique there. How about a more formal outfit this time? A simple shirt and dress pants? I think I'll make another version with jeans too. Okay, let's see. For the knees here, I did the same as earlier on the tummy. The seams on the sides create tension points, and as the knees bulge out a bit, the tension in the fabric is distributed around it, always moving from one side to the other. A similar thing happens on the elbows, but as here we are seeing the inner part of the joint, which does not protrude, but quite the opposite, it's common for wrinkles to appear there. The fabric used on these shirts is usually a bit stiff in a sense, so I like to draw these folds with the zigzag technique and keep the edges somewhat sharp to avoid giving the fabric an easily bendable look. Let's focus our attention on the torso now. The bottom of the shirt gets trapped with a belt, and we've already established that the breasts protrude. So, what do we do now? We connect one tension point to the other, in this case with long vertical straight lines that move towards the belt. And we can't forget about the buttons. Just think what's going on there. The fabric from the left side is being trapped or pinned under the other, thanks to the buttons acting as an anchor point. Short straight lines will work well for this. For smaller breasts, you can keep this very subtle, or even non-existent in the case of boys or very flat chests. For bigger breasts instead, you can either keep them a low amount, like this example, or add a lot more lines if you're looking to represent that the shirt might be a bit too small for the character. Lastly, let's see the dress pants. These are supposed to be loose and made of synthetic fabric, so there won't be many folds on them. Just a few straight lines that comes from the knees and downwards. We can also add a few more around the hips to represent the article fits more tightly there. In this case, the tension points are located on the sides, so the wrinkles go from there to its counterpart. So as you can see, drawing folds on fabric is not a precise science. It's about understanding the type of fabric or piece of clothing that you want to represent. Understand how it is reacting on the body. Where does it get trapped? Where does it overlap? Is there much tightness between the tension points or not? Etc, etc. Okay, Rina, but what if I don't know how a specific fabric works? Well, like I said, use references. Open up Google, Pinterest, or the site of your preference and look for that specific article that's giving you problems. Or if you own a similar piece, just take it out of the closet and pose with it. Even study the fabric with your touch. Stretch it, press it together, even look at the composition on the tag if you want. There's nothing wrong with using references. In fact, they are one of the best ways to learn how to draw anything. Once you understand how reality works, then you're free to follow it or not. I wish I could show you a lot more examples, but I don't want the video to become too long or tedious to watch. So let's make a quick recap before we call it a day. 
ways to draw clothing folds. Straight lines, soft curves, zigzag, and the wardrobe, whatever you want to call it, shape. <laughs> Places to add clothing folds. Any spot that traps the fabric, like armpits, elbows, and the groin. But also around protrusions, like breasts, tummy, and knees. Keep in mind how the fabric is being stretched. If it's tight, if it's loose, where are the seams placed, if there's any of them, of course. And last but not least, use references! Both real-life pictures and illustrations from other artists. Don't be ashamed of using references ever! And that would be it for today's video. I hope all these tips can help you be more comfortable with your art in the future. Don't forget to like, comment and share. And remember to check out my Patreon for early access to all my stuff and exclusive content. Stay safe and see you soon!